I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. It's such a pleasure to be with you here in London. Maybe begin with a bit of an introduction to the film. When I watched it, I mean, I really loved it, by the way, just to say that first and foremost. Um, what really struck me is it's like period drama, but given a sort of blisteringly contemporary feel, both in the way it tackles the themes, but also brings to life these characters. I wonder when you first read the script, what the appeal was for you? Um, it was Joseph. I just thought he was such an incredible um, man. I think with everything that he stood for and what he how he went about it and how, how easy it was for him to just be kind of great in some ways, like in, in terms of his abilities, um, but his resilience in, in allowing people to honor and respect what he was bringing to the table. And I thought that was just a really compelling man to, to play. Mm. Love you. I think it was getting a new insight into that era and, and how contemporary the script felt, how contemporary all of those characters felt. It didn't feel like the distance you can sometimes get with period pieces. It felt so clearly relevant to a rhetoric we're hearing a lot from currently. Um, and also, again, the opportunity to learn about Joseph and then have any part in bringing his story to a broader audience. And in terms of the preparation, I mean, I guess part of the challenge for your character, you know, as we saw at the end of the film, you know, Napoleon Bonaparte destroyed, you know, a lot of the papers about him, his music, the challenge of trying to get the research right or fill in some of those gaps, but then also kind of, you know, the, the technical challenge of, you know, playing the violin and infusing it with this kind of rock star feel of Prince or Jimi Hendrix. So, so where did that all begin for you? And what were some of the hardest bits? Oof, I mean, begin. It was a journey, wasn't it? Oh, man. Um, it, it, you know, you start with a Google. You Google them and, <laughs> and you see what you can find. And then from there, you, you start to gather more materials, um, peer-reviewed papers and journals and books. And then you start to see how much history you can kind of take in. And then you kind of say, all right, well, this is not going to make me play a man. This just gives me the... The, the the parameters around in which I have to exist, um, a structure. And then that's when the Prince and the Jimi Hendrix come through because then you're like, okay, well, let me find like something I'm familiar with, something that resonates with me as the actor, something that actually helps give me a little bit of um, something that's more relatable and contemporary so that the audiences can also kind of understand what Joseph was. And then you throw that in there, and you, you throw a little bit of Kelvin, you throw a little bit of hot sauce, you throw a little bit of tomato, and a little bit of onion, and bell pepper, and then you get Joseph, sorry. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Yep. And for you, I mean, Marie Antoinette, you know, is a character we're familiar with, and there's been so many invocations, and, you know, maybe most famously, Sofia Coppola's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with Kirsten Dunst. Um, but you play it with, you know, there's kind of like a, a bit of a fresh twist on the character, I think, in this film. So where did you begin, and what did you enjoy about playing her? I think, I, I keep seeing it, but I think knowing that there are other well-known iterations kind of frees you in a way because it means that I don't feel beholden to this idea of trying to incorporate everything about her and make this a kind of reveal of the character and educate people on who she is. I get to um, have the freedom to go down one alley and like really drive it down that. And what I loved about Stephanie's script was that it there are elements that feel familiar and then it takes us on a very different journey with a di very different version of her. Um, and and she's, uh, again, I keep saying it, but she's been really villainized throughout history, mm -hmm. but yeah, inaccurately so. And had she been villainized for what she does in this film, it would have been much more understandable. So it was trying to illuminate this different side of her and make her much more of a real person than the kind of character that we've created her to be and have through loads of like misinformation can kind of still hold on to this idea of her. Um, so it's trying to make her much more kind of, I don't know, rooted and, and especially in the context of this film, much darker. And I think, you know, the, the relationship between your two characters is obviously absolutely crucial in the film. And there's so much nuance there. The arcs that you both go on, you know, uh, you know, Marie Antoinette starting as an ally. Mm. Um, and then it makes it all the sort of more painful when she mm. sort of retreats into her privilege. And then also, you know, for Joseph, um, the, the, the fact that, you know, he's, you know, so supported by her, but it's really finding his own roots and embracing those and finding self-love is really what makes him greater than some of his parts. So mm -hmm. just say a few words about that. The arcs of the characters. Yeah, I think he's just, I think Joseph's biggest thing is like, he, says, he just wants to find community. He's like, I just want to find people that see me, that love me, that respect me, um, so that I can know how to better love and respect myself. 
And the journey is a little bit like this idea of what respect is and what respectability politics present us. Um, and and in trying to present the image of it, but it's not in being internalized yet. And so what the journey is, is him trying to internalize what he knows he wants to be, but not knowing what the, the route is to get there. And then he finally finds his mom and, you know, so on and so forth. But you're like, you're like he's about to trail off into cooking I'm again. Like, it was so good. And then we got the hot sauce again. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, yes. Um, sorry. The relationship. Yeah, I think... Uh, I don't know. I think it starts out for her as a kind, a slightly transactional thing already. She recognizes such excellence and she appreciates it, but mostly she wants to be near it, be seen next to it. And so by making him a chevalier, she kind of has the power to do that and feels proud that she does, but mostly just wants to bring him into her court. Mm -hmm. And so that means that it is much more pragmatic when she decides that this relationship isn't now a threat to her. Um, and it's vile and she you see her you know she has the opportunity she reaches a fork in the road and settles ultimately to sit on the wrong side of history but it is yeah kind of heartbreaking when you've invested in that relationship previously and I think it's kind of illuminating to see that it doesn't always originate in villainy it kind of you choose that path mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm out of time but thank you so much for sharing that with me and I really can't wait for everyone else to see this incredible film thanks so thank much. you so much Love you.